Hi, I am Councilwoman Dr. LaShawn Burdanley, and today we are finishing up or continuing our Black History, continuing moments in Black History with the city of Douglasville. And I have with me today Isaac um, Miller. And um, Isaac, you want to just introduce yourself? Um, I'm Isaac Miller. Uh, I'm 17. I go to Douglas County High School right down the road. Okay. Um, and part of the IB program. All right. And um, what year is this for you in high school? Junior year. Wow. One more yeah. year, Isaac. Wow. I remember you, Isaac, when you were <laughs> uh, yay high and my daughter used to babysit you and you've just grown. Your voice has changed. <laughs> Gotten a little deeper there. Well, actually, today, Isaac, um, I typically I, I film with um, my colleague, Councilman Davis, and he has actually um, completed some other productions. And this year, with Continuing Moments in Black History, it's, it's a milestone in the city of Douglasville and also Douglas County. And, and I say that because we've, we've kind of hit a very pivotal moment. And, and what that is is we've had um, some elections that um, have changed the face of how people see things as it relates to African Americans. We now have the very first African American mayor, Rochelle Robinson. We have the very first African American city manager, Marsha Hampton. We have the first African American chief of police, Gary Sparks. We have the first uh, African American sheriff, Tim Pounds. We have the first African American um, chairman of co the commissioner board, um, commission commission woman, Ramona Jackson Jones. And I say that because it definitely is a milestone. So, being that you are a student at uh, Douglas County, you're a junior. Um, what do you, what do you remember the moment when the, these elections were going on? Actually, it was last year. Yes. Last year with, um, what was the atmosphere like? Well, it was funny because I work or I'm a part of our a political club at our school, uh, the Young Democrats, which we worked on a lot of these campaigns, and it was kind of like almost a bittersweet moment because we had the local elections, which went really well around the county, around the city, and then we had the national elections, which kind of just were polar opposites of each other. Mm. While these local elections were really good because we got all the people we wanted in office, like Chairman Jones, Sheriff uh, Tim Pounds, but then national elections, we didn't. So mm -hmm. we were happy for our local elections because local elections have a huge impact on our lives more than we think. Because normally in the news, we're all here. He's like, "Oh, there's the president, there's Congress," but really, it's the county commissioners that are determining whether you get sidewalks and the school board that determines how much your teachers are mm -hmm, getting paid. Mm -hmm. Things that really just kind of like hit home. Yes. Right. Yeah. Just kind of you see it right in your face. So and just um, that's a very good point. <clears throat> and um, so it looks like you've been pretty active. You've been pretty active. Um, with your students, with the students and, and things, and you work really hard on the election. Well, obviously, you did a great job. So um, just getting back to, you know, I hear the, f the phrase, and you may have heard this phrase before, is that people say, oh, I don't see color, I don't see color. Is that really a true statement, do you think? I mean, do you, do you see color? Do you, do you see color? <laughs> what, do you, what, do you, what do you say? Well, I think I don't see color as someone's way of saying, I want to avoid the topic of race. Because really race is a very important issue and what someone should do is when they look at a person they should see the race and acknowledge it. Whether or not they make special exceptions as in trying to go the extra mile just because of the race or trying to put them down just because of the race, that's a whole other issue. Mm -hmm. What you need to do is you need to, like I acknowledge you as an African American woman. Mm -hmm. That doesn't affect me as much because race because I don't see it as a negative thing. I see it as what makes you, you. Okay. So you, you don't see that as different, but, you know, this is just reality. There are some yes. that really see that having too many African Americans in different political positions could be detrimental. What, did this, what do you hear from the students and those that you are, um, that you're with every day? Well, 
I personally I associate with the right crowd. I guess you what's, could say. What's, let me stop you right there. What, what is the right crowd? Well, more to me, it's the right crowd because I'm a liberal, so I associate with people who agree. I guess you could say, and what they see when they see not just African American, but mm-hmm. say uh, Middle Eastern or Hispanic, they see role models. They see people that, such as I have several Pakistani friends. When they see someone who's of Middle Eastern heritage in a position of power, they see a person that who's just like them, yeah. and they realize that I can do that. Mm-hmm. They can relate. Yes. Yes. It shows that it's not just a position reserved for a certain race and gender. It's a position that anyone can have. Right. Or a certain group of people. Yes. That's really great to hear. And, you know, um, you and I were just talking before we began filming, and, and the comment that I made was, I'm African American. I know that. And I'm also a female, so I fall into a category of minority, African-American and female. However, when I think about diversity, I don't just think about African-Americans. I'm very appreciative of my heritage. I'm very appreciative of those that came before me, um, civil rights. And um, unfortunately, people had to lose their life. However, when I think about diversity, yes, I think about women. I think about those with special needs. I think about um, different ethnicities. And it's it's a lot more broader. Do you, in your opinion, think that um, in the era that you're in, as it relates to your age and diversity, and you're saying that your friends are more diverse, do you think that the trend of diversity is is going to broaden into being more diverse, and and and, you, and the group that you participate with will not be more concentrated in just a race of people and a gender. I mean, well, I believe as time goes on, diversity will help essentially normalize diversity in the sense that we don't have to make. Because if you hear now, like, if on the uh, in four years, if say we had a Hispanic president, it'd be a big deal because it'd be our first Hispanic president. Mm-hmm. The problem is, it's just. It shouldn't be a big deal. It should be, oh, we had a Hispanic president. We've had another one. We've had multiple. It should be that you shouldn't have to, that everyone should be able to strive equally instead of some people having to work harder and overcome obstacles, such as in the recent election, we had a black woman running for county commissioner. And everyone was like, oh, she has to overcome the struggles of being a black woman running for office, there shouldn't be have to be any struggles for her. She should be able to run for office as if she's running for office mm-hmm. normally. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like if I, as a straight white male, I can run for office and everyone be like, oh, it's just another politician. Mm-hmm. While if someone else that's not a straight white male, they'd be like, it becomes a big deal because we've had so little. We need more to encourage the fa- encourage more people who aren't straight white males mm-hmm. to run for office. So, I grew up. I didn't grow up in um, the era of civil rights, but my parents did and my grandparents did. So, there were stories that I that I heard um, in regards to my mom. She had to go to um, a different restroom where it was just all black, and and even to drink it out of a water fountain that was labeled black only. Um, so there are things that she experienced that I didn't. And, but to hear those as a black woman and then, and then to live in a community where you, can, you still hear um, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be this way if you're uh, black and if you run for office, that's the way it's going to be. Being that, obviously, your parents didn't have to deal with the black and white, I'm assuming, the separate, um, the separate uh, rules of that nature. And you don't have to deal with that in school. I didn't either. But do you still see the separation of black and white um, to that degree in school and in the, in the, um, at the mall or in the community? Is it really that hardcore? Well, it's not. I mean, it's not 1960s hardcore, but I mean, it's more of just social groups. You see, I'll be walking down the hallway and I'll see students that are uh, white students tending to gather with white students, Hispanics with Hispanics. And I think it just tends, it's sort of a result 
of the 60s and the civil rights mm -hmm. because we have all the African Americans were designated to these neighborhoods, therefore these schools, and they've grown up knowing these people and their parents knew each other and it sort of just carries out. And some, some of them might have been grown up to be distrusting, not necessarily overtly racist, mm -hmm. but not as familiar with, say you take someone who was born in the middle of Iowa where it's not very diverse right. and you put them in the middle of somewhere where in the middle of a city with such as Detroit, where it's got a higher population of minorities, they might not be as comfortable because they're not used to associating with someone who's different from them. Mm -hmm. And hmm. Yeah. so how would you encourage those that may not can accept the change of the more diverse population, let's just get down to it, that there's not going to be always a white person in office, or there may not always be a black person in office, but one day there will be more Hispanics in office. How do, we, how, how do you help, or how do we help others see the bigger picture? Well, I mean, for one is just teaching Education is a big part of it. If teachers, in especially social studies classes, they we my social studies classes, I've learned that there was a civil war, or well, colonists brought over slaves. Slaves were in horrible conditions. Civil war happened. Slaves were free. Then they were the sixties. Then there was that mushy period in between that no one really studies with regarding civil rights mm -hmm. the 60s happened everyone's happy and equal except last year was different for me hmm. we had a teacher who came from predominantly african-american schools who gave us several books to read one uh slavery by another name which was a really good book and she was she would teach her classes and they didn't really know about all the stuff in between civil war to World War II. And in the, in the book, Slavery by Another Name, it talks about how African Americans were still enslaved between that, not necessarily by chains, mm -hmm. but just by laws and by social standards that had been set forth by society. Hmm. So, and I hadn't known this either. I had grown up with the whole mushy period and forget about it, mm -hmm. 60s, everything's good. And now that I took that class and my eyes have been op opened, I realize that some of that stuff carries on today. And by becoming aware of it, we can help stop it. Right. Right. So you said education is one, just educating. And you were educated yes. um, a little bit more just from what your teacher um, exposed you all to. So will you take the knowledge that your teacher shared and share it with someone else? Is that what you're saying? Yes. Like when I have my my children, hopefully, I will, when I have to, because eventually every parent has to talk to their child about race and mm -hmm. why, especially Af I've heard from my own friends that African Americans, when they grow up, essentially they're taught, African American and white children are taught two very different things about the police. Mm -hmm. White children tend to be taught there's the police, respect it, they're your friend, always trust them, while African Americans, my friends, tend to be taught, beware of the police, but respect them, they're always in charge no matter what. Mm -hmm. And so, when I teach my children, I'll teach them both stories, essentially. I'll tell them, like, you will have an advantage, most likely, because of your skin color, and you mm -hmm. need to be aware of that, but it's not necessarily a bad thing. You don't need to shame yourself or be afraid or be, or just hurt yourself over the fact that you're more advantaged, just acknowledge it and try to help other people so that you don't ha necessarily have the advantage, but so that they can catch up to you. Wow. You're just blowing my mind. <laughs> this is really, really great. I, I, so you mentioned that your African-American friends Typically, I guess male, maybe. Um, it appears that a, a lot of times the African-American men um, 
seem to be or have been targeted more than any other race um, as it relates to the police. So what about other races like um, Hispanic? Um, would you say that it, they're on the same playing field or do they feel the same way? Well, I feel like the playing field is, it's a different sport essentially for almost every race. Some people have to deal with other problems that other races don't. Well, I know many of my Hispanic friends tend to have to deal with such uh, topics such as immigration differently. Like I have friends who, due to recent laws, got really worried for some of their family members. Mm -hmm. While I have other friends who are black or uh, Middle Eastern who got worried for different reasons and they have to deal with it differently. Would it not be awesome if we were all born in this world where we didn't have to think about the color of your skin? That'd be. That would be really cool, right? Or, you know, I grew up and, and my skin tone is, is dark. Although there were prejudice, prejudices of being black, it was another level of being black. You were black, but you were different. If you weren't light skin, then you're dark skin. and and that, go, that went on among your own race, you know. Um, so there are just diff different levels of um, racism. And, you know, just tying this whole thing up, thank you so much for your time and just for your, your wisdom at the age that you are, um, of where do we go from here? We educate. So leaving this room do we really just continue to see people as they are? Educate them? What do you think Douglasville and Douglas County will look like in the next, let's say, five to ten years? Well, I'd say five to ten years probably might not, I don't think as much will change. Maybe a couple official positions might swap out. But I'd say it's really the far future is that we got to think about because there was a National Geographic article that said what the average human will look like mm. from around 2050. And they weren't white, they weren't black. They were essentially almost all races mixed. And that's really just what we gotta look for is people are changing, times are changing. Mm -hmm. The internet alone. That's in, when Rodney King got beat up, it was a big deal then because it was publicized, it was on tape. Now, nowadays, we hear every other week there's someone caught on tape getting beat up. It's just as technology changes, it changes people. So mm -hmm. hopefully it'll change us for the better. Yeah, and, and you mentioned, um, you know, it's, it, everyone is just kind of coming to, it's, they're, it's going to change so that everyone is kind of coming together. It's like a melting pot. Is yes. that what you're kind of referring to as a melting pot? And I've actually heard the term, uh, some people say Georgia is becoming a melting pot. And, and I've also, just in different conversations that I've heard, is people say, well, you know, by 2030, G Georgia will probably be a brown state. What, is, what does it mean to be a brown state? Well, I mean, <laughs> I guess from their perspective, <laughs> not no real majority in race, maybe. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, I do believe, just in my own opinion, I, we've come, we, when I say we, we've come a long way. I mean, my, I remember my mom and my grandmother, my grandmother, she wasn't here when the first African-American president was elected. And there were, that day when President Obama was elected, the moment I saw people literally on the ground, crying with joy, tears, just weeping. Like, oh my God, has this really, really happened? And you're right, if there's a Hispanic president, it will be another level for, for the Hispanic population. In closing, I'd like to see that we get to a point where People are looked upon because they're people. By Dr. King said, "What? Judge not by the uh, color of their skin, but by the content, content of the character. Exactly of their character." So, Isaac, 
thank you so much for this time and continuing moments in African American history. Thank you for having me. This filming will go down in history. <laughs> so you can look forward to your children and your children's children watching this very film about the milestones that have occurred in the city of Douglasville. Thank you so much for your viewers. Look forward to seeing you again. Great evening.